Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So behind me I got a 2011 Ford Ranger. This thing has around 120,000 miles on it and the customer is complaining of a noise from the front when they're driving. We've determined it's a bad wheel bearing on the driver's front wheel here. As you can see the wheel's already off and we're going to go ahead and replace that today. But before we go ahead and do so guys, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button down below because it will definitely help the channel grow. And with that said, let's go ahead and start on today's repair. All right guys, so once you get the car in the air and support it, uh, take your wheel off. I've already gone ahead and I've done that. What I like to do starting off on this is I'm gonna go ahead and remove my axle nut. Uh, this one is a 32 millimeter, so we're just gonna go ahead and zip that off. Now, uh, it will fight you a little bit. You can see uh, it was a little rusted on there, but not too bad. Typically, they have a little bit of a fight on them. Uh, and after you remove the axle nut, what you want to do is just see if your actual axle is going to slide in and out. If your axle does not slide in and out, what you're going to have to do is use some sort of uh, something that can fit in this little hole here and go ahead and hit it. Now, I will show you how I deal with this. Uh, let me just get my tool and I'll show you how we go ahead and push that back. Now that our axle nut is removed, uh, we aren't able to push our axle back. Now what I do in the shop guys is I use my air hammer and I use the blunt tip on there. You can see it's just a round tip. I only put it in the center hole. The reason why you want to avoid hitting this just with a hammer is because you can mushroom out the end with a flat hammer if you just hit it. Uh, that's why they put this little dot here or this little hole. So you can use something like this, like a blunt circular object to hit on it. Now you can use like a brass drift or some sort of like a punch in here. Um, what I'm essentially doing is using my air hammer. It's kind of like a punch. So I'm going ahead and I'm setting it up in the center. I'm gonna go ahead and hit this a couple times. And just like that, that's all it took. You guys will see now that my axle is moving in and out. So we went ahead and we broke it loose. All right guys, so the next step in this is we're going to be removing our caliber retaining bolt so I'm choosing to remove the caliper with the bracket and all I'm not gonna disassemble the brakes so I'm gonna move this bolt right here and then this bolt up here I'm gonna use my Milwaukee uh, half-inch stubby here um, you do have to use an extension for that top one unless you're just using a hand ratchet to break them off uh, it'll make it a little bit easier to get in there and then we're gonna go ahead and remove our second one. So now our caliper and bracket are loose. I'm gonna switch you guys to the front and you'll see me remove it. Now that your caliper is loose and you got your bracket bolts off guys, what I like to do is take a screwdriver or something and what you're gonna to wanna to do is just compress the piston a tiny bit. Uh, just push them inward so that way it's a little bit easier to remove and reinstall your caliper. Now ideally it's easier to do this when the caliper is mounted, I just forgot to do it, that's why I'm showing it now. But it'll basically make removing the caliper easy, because what you're doing is compressing the brake caliper, you're getting those pistons to push in. And then we're going to take our caliper hook and we're going to hang our caliper out of the way here. Now that we have our caliper off, uh, if your rotor just comes off easily, go ahead and slide it off. Ours uh, came off very easy right there. And now we got access to our hub. So we're gonna go ahead and start working on the hub now. So now I got you positioned behind the wheel bearing guys. And I'm not gonna really go too in depth on this. I'll just kind of give you guys an example because it's ideally the same way. Now this hub is bolted on by three bolts. You got one here on the bottom, one up top, and one on the other side that you're gonna have to come through the front and access through here. And you're gonna have to kind of, uh, you know, move this wheel inward uh, using the other wheel on the other side you're gonna have to kind of play the back and forth game with it where you turn the wheel back and forth now since I'm uh, turned all the way to the right side I have clear access to these two bolts to get the third one on the back side I'm gonna move the steering wheel all the way to the driver's side and then I'll have this much of an opening from the front side right here uh, to gain access to it now what you simply want to do with these is quite simple uh, grab your uh, wrench and ratchet now, it's kind of difficult because you guys can see here, if you use a short stubby uh, rat, a wrench, it's not really going to work out too well. You got to have kind of like a deep socket 
or even angular sockets, guys. Uh, you just kind of got to figure out your tool in here and what works best for you. So what I normally like to do on this is I use my 15 millimeter long socket on a 3 8 wrench. And what I do is I'll put that on there and I'm going to go ahead and break them loose. Now these shouldn't be really too tight on there. Um, unless someone has gone nuts and basically impacted them on, they should come off. I'm going to go ahead and do this for all three of them. I'm going to break them loose and get the bolts off. Um, it's kind of uh, tedious to show doing that process, guys, because all I'm going to do is just ratchet them off just like I did. So go ahead and do that step uh, to unbolt your wheel bearing, and then, uh, you know, I'll be back and show you guys the next step. All right, guys, so I went ahead and I got all three bolts off. This is what they look like. Uh, they're about medium in length. And they really didn't fight me too much. They came off fairly easy for me. Uh, what I did was I cracked them loose like you just saw in the other clip. And then I used my Milwaukee electric ratchet to drive them off the rest of the way. So we have all three of them off. Our next step now is to go ahead and remove the wheel bearing. Uh, this is where a lot of people might get a little bit confused. Because if you guys will notice the axle is still in there. And a lot of people will uh, think this is like a front wheel drive car where you have to dislocate the upper ball joint to bring down the knuckle to be able to get the bearing off. And you don't have to do that guys. All you really have to do is get the bearing off and the axle will actually stay in the uh, knuckle assembly and you can just slide it off. So that way you don't have to do any extra tedious work trying to pull the axle back or anything. You just kind of leave it in place. Make sure that it is nice and loose. Uh, this one locked up a little bit, but it still moves in and out from me uh, moving the wheel. Now that it's unbolted, we're going to go ahead and get our wheel bearing off. Now, there's several methods to getting the wheel bearing off, guys. Um, this one's been on there for a while, so what I typically like to do is I'll grab my air hammer. And I'll just vibrate it a little bit. Uh, you want to, you know, just be careful. Now, this is going to be a little loud, so uh, I'm going to show you a quick snippet, and then I'll kind of cut it off, and uh, we'll come back on the next clip. All right, guys, so for me, just hitting it with the air hammer right here, as you saw in the last clip, I was able to get the wheel bearing to turn from the knuckle assembly. And you guys will see here, it's, you know, moved out uh, quite a bit. So this is loose. Now, it's still a little tight on there. I am going to have to hit it this way, but I was able to at least break it loose. So I know it's going to move in there for me. Now, if you don't have an air hammer at home, the way you can do this is, you know, with a chisel and a hammer. Uh, once you get it to move, I always find that if you could get it to move inside the bore, uh, then all you have to do for the rest of it is just tap it out this way with the hammer and it will come out. Um, I will try using my air hammer on this ear right here to drive mine off. But if you're doing this at home with a hammer, you can basically just hit this portion of it. Uh, the reason why I'm using the air hammer on the base of it is because this customer specifically wants to see this bearing. So I'm trying not to hurt the actual wheel bearing or anything by hitting it on the front fascia. I want to try to keep it as intact as I can. Because sometimes if you hit these with a hammer, you can damage the bearings even more. Now, even though this one is damaged, the customer would still like to uh, check it out because he claims that someone else did this job uh, not too long ago. And uh, I don't know what the case is, but he just wants to see it. Uh, so I'm just going to, you know, follow uh, his instructions as far as what he wants. Um, you know, because like I said, at the end of the day, it's not a big deal for me. Um, the only way that uh, I can't uh, do that is if this thing is seasoned, then I would have to hit the front fascia. But in this scenario, it uh, worked out. Um, the next step that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, take off our ABS wire. Now, we're going to have to move the wheel the other way. So I'm going to go to the passenger side here, and it's quite easy. As long as the key is in the ignition, uh, it shouldn't lock up. We should be able to just move your wheel like that. This is exactly the same move that I did earlier to be able to gain access to my wheel bearing uh, bolt that was on the front fascia, which is right here. I'll just show you guys that while we're doing that. Now, our ABS wire on this, um, it's not really that difficult. It goes from here and it follows all the way up and it terminates to this connector right up here. Um, so all you're going to do is just basically push that tab and disconnected um, and then what I'm going to do is use a pair of pry tools and just you know remove all the little plastic clips where it's being held on into the frame uh, right up here we have a I believe an eight millimeter we got to unscrew to get that wire off from the knuckle and other than that it should come off fairly easy now I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera here uh, 
but just to kind of give you guys an idea, this is the tool that you're going to need to prep all those clips. All right, guys, so I got my ABS wire uh, taken down. Uh, what I did here on the frame, just to clarify, is I actually unhooked these clips because I'm not sure if my wheel bearing will come with them or not. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. I know on GMs, they usually come with every clip, but this particular one, I just want to be sure, so I left those in there. And this is what holds uh, the actual connector in. You can see this is just pushed into the frame. What you do is use that tool to just pry up on it. Uh, and these, they have like a little... Uh, push tab where you push them back and slide them down to be able to unhook them. Uh, what I'm going to do next here is go ahead and take off this little bolt holding the wire harness into place here. Um, should be a fairly short bolt, shouldn't be too long. Um, this one is an 8 millimeter from what I believe but a 5 16 wound up fitting a little bit better on there. So I'm just using a 5 16 quarter inch and we're just going to go ahead and back that off all the way there and this thing should come off just like that just a small little bolt uh, once you have that off you can basically just take your wire and move it out now nothing is holding our wire assembly uh, everything is nice and loose because we're going to be getting off our abs wheel speed sensor with the wheel bearing because you can see that does not look very great it's very crusty and i definitely don't want to have any issues with it uh, that's why we're going to take it off all in one there all right guys, so one thing that I'm gonna do before I go ahead and start pressing this wheel bearing to come out of here or hitting it, is I'm gonna take my axle nut bolt and I'm just going to give it a couple threads. The main reason is because if you're gonna be using an air hammer or a hammer to shoot this off of here, if it comes off real quick, it could you know wind up hitting something or damaging something wherever it falls. So what'll happen is if I break it loose, this will keep it from falling on the ground or hitting something or someone. So there's a little safety measure I take. You don't have to do it, but it's you know a good idea, especially if you're using an air hammer like I'm going to do to get it off. And the way that I'm gonna show you guys the removal of this, uh, cause it's gonna be kinda loud when I use my air hammer, I'm gonna go ahead and time lapse it uh, so you guys can see the process. Uh, and like I said, if you don't have an air hammer, what you're gonna wanna do is you know hit the fascia of it, you know, going backwards uh, from this uh, spot right here. And that'll help drive it off. Now, you always wanna avoid trying to wedge stuff in here. You don't wanna damage the knuckle. So try to keep you know anything from being wedged in between the two surfaces. I know it's very tempting to take uh, you know, like a, a punch that's a chisel bit and you know try to break it free like that but you can wind up damaging it guys so just be very mindful and thoughtful of that i'm going to go ahead and get the camera set up and we're going to go ahead and take off this bearing so now we have our wheel bearing off you'll see in the last clip ours actually came off very easy it didn't take that much i could have actually taken it off with a uh, hammer if i wanted to now keep in mind guys we left the axle in here we didn't have to uh, separate the knuckle from anything to get our axle out. So we're gonna have to work around our axle now. And what I always like to do is I like to clean off the fascia of where my bearing is gonna mount. And the way I do it is I use my grinder wheel. And what I'll typically do is something like this. And you'll see it exposes nice fresh bare metal. Um, if you don't have this at home, what you could also do is just a scotch Bright pad or some sort of sandpaper. Clean up the fascia where it's going to mount. It's very important. And if you're able to get in the channel here, uh, which it's going to be difficult for me to get in there with anything like this. Um, if you don't want to, just make sure you blow it out with air and sand it down a little bit with whatever you have. Because uh, even though this doesn't matter too much on the inside, it'll make your installation a lot easier. It'll make the bearing go in there if there's no rust or anything keeping it from uh, fully going in there. But the most important thing is this fascia. Now I'm going to go ahead and clean mine up the best I can. I'm going to use my uh, uh, angle grinder with my, uh, I call these oatmeal cookies, uh, but they're basically a prep pad. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll be right back with you guys. I've gone ahead and I cleaned off my area as good as I could guys. While I was in there I also hit this portion. It was kind of rotted and rusty so I made it flat. Now what I'm going to do is take my brake cleaner uh, and we're going to go ahead and spray down everything here. And we're just going to try to get as much you know, dirt and grime off to make it nice and clean. Um, so once we have it all cleaned up and everything is uh, rust free, uh, we should be good to go. Um, I did my best job trying to clean inside here. As you guys will kind of notice, and it's hard to tell, but it has a beveled edge. 
Uh, see if I get the camera um, good here. See right above there? See there's a little bit of a beveled edge. That's what I mainly clean off. That'll help get the bearing in there a lot easier. Uh, so I cleaned that portion of it off. And uh, now that everything is nice and clean, we wet, uh, wiped everything down with our brake cleaner or sprayed everything down, I should say. What I am going to do is let this go ahead and, you know, dissipate all of the brake cleaner and dry off. And before we reassemble it, what I like to do is hit this with some sort of penetrating oil, some sort of fluid film or anti-corrosion or anti-rust uh, type of product. Um, definitely don't use anti-seize, guys. I've seen many people smear anti-seize like crazy. That's not what you want to do. I usually just use some fluid film and I'll spray it on the surfaces uh, that are on the inside here, on the axle shaft and everything, just so there's no seizing issues later on if someone else has to go in here for any sort of service or if eventually this wheel bearing that we're installing fails and they have to replace it, we just make it uh, easier. Because the next person could be you redoing the job. If you work at a shop or if you own the car, you might be going in there again in a few hundred thousand miles if you plan on keeping your car for a long time. So try to always... Uh, build prep work inside of your job meaning if you're doing it do it so the next time if you have to go in there you make it easier on yourself and it's not rough especially if it puts up a fight for you now that it's dried off quite a bit guys what i'm gonna do is go ahead and take some fluid film and uh we're gonna shake it up here i'm sure you guys hear it and um what we're gonna do is just go ahead and spray the areas here um i like to get the axle really really well just to help slide it in there and then just the fascia. Now I'm being very careful not to put any inside of the bolt holes guys. I just kind of want it on the fascia areas because what I'm going to do is use a little bit of Loctite on the wheel bearing uh, bolts that hold it into place. So uh, now that we have that on there, I'm going to go ahead and get the new wheel bearing and we're going to go ahead and set it up for reassembly. All right guys, so now that everything is clean and we sprayed it down with our fluid film lubricant what we're gonna do is go ahead and take your wheel bearing now the wheel bearing that I got uh, as I mentioned earlier remember we uh, talked about these clips we saved them because we thought it might not have came with the bearing well they do come with a new wheel bearing it's a complete unit kind of like how Chevy and GM and everything does theirs um, the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna go ahead and slide it in on our axle and we're going to take our ABS wire and make sure you feed it through the way the old one was, which is going to be behind this uh, dust shield, guys. Now, this is a, a little difficult because I got to hold a bearing in there and push it in. Plus, this new one has this little white jacket on there to help protect it from any heat or anything. But uh, we went ahead and we got that pushed through. Now the rest of the wire here, we're not gonna worry about for the ABS. What we're gonna worry about is just basically getting everything lined up here. Now, this one should sit just like this. And what we're gonna do is go ahead and get it pushed in. All right guys, now that you have the bearing pushed in and it's basically lined up and in place, we're gonna go ahead and install the wheel bearing bolts. And what I'm gonna have to do is come here on the passenger side and position my wheel uh, towards the passenger side front so I can get two of my bolts on here. Now, I did go ahead and put some blue Loctite on my bolts, guys. Um, even though it doesn't come like this from the factory, it's not a bad practice to have some sort of locker on here. Uh, and then what we're gonna do is go ahead and put our wheel bearing bolts in line up our bearing um, this part of it you're gonna have to kind of play with it uh, back and forth to get it to line up because you're gonna have to kind of push out and pull out on it and you know get your bolts in now I'm gonna go ahead and do this for all three of the bolts and I'll be right back once I get everything tightened up all right guys now that we uh, got everything bolted up and everything is good to go what we're gonna do is go ahead and install our ABS wire here now I already went ahead just to save everybody time on the camera here I bolted it up to the knuckle with the bolt where it goes and then what you're gonna want to do is just push in the rest of the connectors into place here um, it's quite easy to be honest with you they only go in a certain way and then we're just going to install our connector. I think I installed this one the wrong way here. Let me see if I can reposition it. And 
this one. This one's always difficult because it's on the frame and you can't quite see it. Every single one that I've done, uh, it's in a weird position and that one goes right there. So that's kind of what your wire should look like. Uh, you want to make sure that you're clear of this control arm. Um, you can easily mistake this up here as being one of the points, but it's actually these two down here. What I normally tell people is uh, take a picture of it. Um, I think before uh, it was as bended the other way, which works too. I got to kind of recall on the video there, but uh, for the most part, this is what you should have. Just, you know, lay it flat on the frame. And then what you're going to want to do is take your connector and you're going to want to go ahead and connect your ABS uh, sensor here. I'm going to try to do it, get out of the way of the camera, make sure it clicks into place. And then uh, that's pretty much it as far as the ABS wire. That step is ready to go. Now, what we're going to be doing next is go ahead and tighten up uh, our brake system, bolt everything up. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So now that ABS wire, everything is installed, our bearing is bolted up, we're going to take our brake rotor guys and we're just gonna go ahead and put it in there. And next thing that we're going to do is take our caliper bracket and all that we hung off to the side. We're gonna go ahead and take our hook off and we're gonna make sure the pads are fully pushed all the way in. And this can be a little difficult guys, uh, earlier in the video, you guys saw me push the caliper back. That was simply so I can get it to slide. I basically spread the piston and the pads apart from one another, pushing the pistons and everything, just so I can have that uh, easy movement here. Now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and take my bolts and I'm going to set up uh, my caliper on here. And this can be a little bit of a fight because if you guys will notice, this rotor wants to constantly move because nothing is holding it in because uh, the wheel is not bolted up to it. Uh, but I went ahead and I got my bolt started up. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and tighten this down and I'll be right back with you guys. Alright guys, so our caliper is bolted up. Everything is looking good. The last step in this is going to be to tighten up your axle nut. Now I wait for this step specifically in the end because the way I do it uh, is basically I use the rotor to keep the wheel from moving to be able to achieve torque on this. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and start it off by hand and then I'm going to use my impact gun to drive it down all the way because this does have quite a few threads. Alright guys, so I cut the clip there because it was actually taking a long time with this gun. So now that I basically drove the nut down but I didn't torque it using the gun, what I'm going to do is go ahead and back it off a little bit. So just a little bit so it's not tight on there. And the way that I choose to basically tighten these on guys, and uh, for those of you that have been watching my channel for a while, you know I don't share torque specs or anything like that because depending on what system you use it could be different but what i do is i take a flat blade screwdriver i will put it on one of the cooling fins and the way that i will tighten this up is i'll take my torque wrench like this and then i'll go ahead and tighten it up now as you guys will see this thing is still pretty loose um, i did not impact it on with the gun now what i'm going to do off camera is use my uh ratchet here or my torque wrench i should say uh, it is a torque wrench guys uh, i'm gonna go ahead and torque it to the specs that i found on mitchell and i'll be right back with you guys all right guys so i went ahead and i tightened up my axle nut now one thing about fords unlike most other cars depending on the model guys they typically don't have any sort of lock on here the way these work is this axle nut will be kind of like elongated like where it's pushed in a little bit so it's kind of a pressure fit that's why when you're using the impact to drive it in it takes a, a pretty big toll and the impact actually works to get it on there because it's kind of oval it's not a true circle that's kind of their lock around there what keeps them from backing out um, now that you have this done all you have to do is go ahead and reinstall the wheel take the car on a test drive and you're basically all set uh, the wheel bearing has been replaced all right guys so that's how you replace a wheel bearing on a 2011 ford ranger now this one is a four wheel drive model guys i got to point that out because the two wheel drive and four wheel drive models do have pretty big differences when it comes to this a four wheel drive model will go exactly the same way we just did it both fronts are done the same way um, 
on a two wheel drive model, you have a floating bearing design. So it's a completely different type of bearing design and style to use on there. So this only applies to four wheel drive models and it's like any other hub uh, style that's bolted on out there. Now this job for us went pretty smoothly guys. Uh, it was quite easy as you guys saw. Normally it is an easy job. Uh, typically the things to watch out for that might fight you on something like this would be the axle uh, being seized inside of the bearing. The bearing hub bolts holding it onto the knuckle could be a struggle as well. And last but not least, the wheel bearing separating it from the knuckle. That can actually be a major pain. In this scenario, it came off fairly easy. May not be the same for you. It may be rotted on there. So it will basically, you know, give you a little bit of a workout and make you work for it if it is seized on there. So uh, be mindful of that because in this video, they just came off quite easily using the air hammer. But uh, hopefully if you guys have this truck, this video helps you guys out. Please comment, like, and subscribe because it definitely helps the channel grow. And with that said, I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I'll catch you guys on the next video.